this seems like a perfectly appropriate start for this talk. Um, <laughs> being in the wrong room and then and then here, um, sort of, yeah, tracing tracing a technical history of open historical map, but in my head, what technical histories are social histories essentially. So it's going to be tracing both a, a technical and social history of this project that sort of meandered its way through the universe the past. 13 years now, I see, I see Richard sitting here kind of um, looking up and it's, it's, it's been a while since, since folks have been at it and it's, it's, it's followed an interesting journey. I, I, I feel grateful to have been part of, you know, from the beginning and then part of some snapshots of that journey and so yeah, I'll be sharing, you know, some of it from a personal perspective and then also cover some of the, the, the tech that's running the site and, and then also some of the kind of crazy challenges we face into the future. I don't, you know, I, I'm not sure we all knew what we were getting into uh, when we started this. It just seemed like a fun thing to do. Um, cool, yeah. Um, so who am I? Um, I currently work with um, a consultancy firm called Development Seed. Um, I've been with them for the past three and a half years or so. Um, um, you know, nature of consultancy, work on a uh, broad range of projects. Um, and the system architect of the International Federation of the Red Cross Go platform is uh, one of the things I do, and then um, a, a, a bunch of other fun stuff. Um, I was involved with the Open Historical Map Project uh, right at the beginning. Uh, I was working for a small firm called Topomancy, um, along with uh, Skylar Earl, Tim Waters, and Shekhar Krishnan. Uh, which, um, you know, where, uh, where some of this was seeded, of course it's a much broader community, but Topomancy um, kind of sponsored the initial, initial hosting and had purchased the domain name, um, that's kind of where it's seeded. Um, I worked with Mapbox for a few years after that, um, had the, um, you know, one of the things I'm proud of at Mapbox was working closely with Willie Marcel, Anwar Sancha. Um, and at Development Seed, I'm also the lead developer for a project called OSM Seed, which will become relevant a little bit later in the presentation. Um, cool. Is this actually, is, this is not going to work, is it? Okay, so, ah, it might work. That's great. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, so video is supposed to play here. So if you can just imagine me moving this time slider, and seeing the history of the continental United States. Um, so you can go to Open Historical Map, um, and if you go to the continental United States, you will see a time slider, and I can promise you, if you move the time slider, you will see, um, you'll sort of see well, what users have entered as, uh, as data about, um, you know, about changing time. Now, this, so this is kind of, well, this was supposed to be a cool animating demo, which it's not, so I'll just move on. Um, okay, um, so the, let's, let's do a quick kind of history recap of, of, of how we got here. Um, in 2009, I believe, is when the domain shows as having been registered. Um, that's when, I believe, Shekhar Krishnan from Tapu Nancy purchased the domain. At that time, we were working with on a historical gazetteer for um, with the Library of Congress and the New York Public Library, and you know I think there were some ideas of oh, we should, that there should be some sort of you know open software to do historical mapping, right? That sounds um, you know we we were all big fans and users of OpenStreetMap, um, and then you know. We ended up building the software for um, NYPL and um, Library of Congress, which it it worked for them. It it was great, but it was a lot of complexity. It was it was it was rebuilding a lot of things. Um, it was um, you know I, I I'll make sure I update the slides and, and share the code for that. But then towards towards the end of that project, I think on a lark. Um, uh, Tim Waters, who I don't know if, if folks here know him, he used to run the project, a great project called the Map Warper. Um, it's like, you know, what if, what if we just use open, the OpenStreetMap software, right? Like, what if we just use OpenStreetMap and add two tags, start date and end date, right? So it'll be exactly OpenStreetMap, we'll add two tags, start date and end date, and then we'll be able to show features by date. Um, I was highly skeptical, um, and you know, I remember asking. I think 
at one of the state of the map conferences in New York, um, asking Mikel, like, how, how is this going to work? Like, how are we going to do, uh, how is open, the OpenStreetMap software uh, going to adapt to time? And he was like, oh, it's really easy. We just, uh, we just fork mod tile and add a T parameter, right? So we just have X, Y, Z, and T, and, and, and mod tile will just, will just render tiles um, by time. That, that never happened. Um, and mapping technology was, was in a different space. The world was, was in a different space in 2009. Um, 2013, I think, is when we had the first. So we were like, you know what? We're not, we're not sure how we're actually going to display this time-based data. But what makes sense for now is to set up the OpenStreetMap software and have people enter data with a start date and end date, right? And we, we figure out showing it down the line. And, um, and there was an amazing community of people who, who were like, okay, uh, we know how to use OSM, we have all this historical data that we really want to uh, we really want to map, we really want um, want to be open, and a kind of small but dedicated community emerged, um, uh, adding data into open historical map, even though there was no spectacularly good way to get it out. I know at some point uh, there was a demo of the raster tiles, which is the kind of Burning Man uh, set up from one year to the next, uh, rendering on the raster tiles, but that's sort of the best I remember in terms of visualizing what what this could be. Um, but you know, a, a, a community that uh, grew um, between 2013 and 16. Now, we we were running this at that at that time on on a single box that cost about 35 euro a month. As I said, there were much simpler times. Um, and because I was working at Top Mansi, no one else wanted to do it, I landed up being kind of sysadmin on that box, even though I didn't quite know what I was doing. I had, I had root on that box. I would, I would try and log in and, and run updates once in a while. Um, there, were, there were folks like um, um, Tim Waters, Richard Walty, who had set up kind of a lot of the software on that box. Um, and people were plugging away at it. Um, at that point, I, you know, I started working with Mapbox. Um, and in 2016, December, just before Christmas, um, I think someone was like, oh, the OHM website looks down. And I was like, oh, let me, let, let me just go to the server and see what's up. Probably just needs to be rebooted. And I was like, oh, one of the hard drives has failed. Well, OK, it's, it's, it's a RAID setup. We should be able to recover with one of the hard drives. I was like, well, both the hard drives have failed. Um, that was not nice. Um, I spent about <laughs> three days trying to run DD Rescue. If anyone's ever tried to run DD Rescue, it's, it's not fun. Uh, don't ever be in a situation where you need to run DD Rescue. Um, trying to recover the hard drives and, um, you know, it, it, it was a bad time. Um, we lost some data. He appeared. Um, Rob Warren had a backup of um, PDF files of the data. He he took it, set it up, set it up on a better hosting environment um, uh, in his university, um, and um, OHM was kind of restored, and uh, the community continued, and um, you know people continued to be uh, uh, you know dedicated editors over over the next two or three years. There was um, there was a whole team of people who who set up a lot of the ancillary services who made. Uh, changes to ID to better accommodate time-based editing, who um, set up Tasking Manager for Open Historical Map, um, which are wealthy set up overpass. I remember uh, being at SOTM uh, New York on the steps, kind of trying to figure it out, um, and uh, uh, Richard maintained o uh, overpass for OHM for the next many years. Um, in parallel, there were a few things happening. Um, um, there was at this point, we still didn't have we still didn't have a time slider, right? Like this was the dream. Like we were putting in the data with uh, start and end dates, and we wanted to be able to we wanted a time slider to be able to move and and see that data change, right? That was the point of of a historical map. Um, Jeff Meyer, who had been you know someone else who was involved with the project right from the beginning, kind of just passionate about historical mapping, and started working with a team. Uh, green info. Uh, we have Dan here, um, uh, Seth Fitzsimmons, a team, a team of people here who, uh, you know, were really working on generating vector tiles. It was now 2018. We had vector tiles. Uh, vector tiles were, you know, standard across across formats. 
um, and it was okay. We, if we generate vector tiles, we can actually do this this filtering on the front end, right? Which which was a big change, uh, which was something that had been the blocker for a long time to try and get it into the um, into the raster tile uh, rendering engine. Um, and then I somehow got involved with the project again. I was working with Seth Fitzsimmons on something else, and he's like, oh, I'm going for an OHR call. And I was like, oh, I used to have root on that box once. Uh, let me join this call. Um, and I could see that you know it was, it was struggling to figure out the optimal architecture to kind of get this running in, in, in a way that was sustainable, in a way that would allow us to make updates, um, in a way that you know, was, was, was appropriate for, for 2019. So at that point, um, um, you know, working with all these folks, um, sort of 2019 OHM moves to the cloud, where we kind of deployed the new infrastructure along with the time slider, um, you know, the, the, the demo that I was hoping to show earlier. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll describe some of, some of what that architecture is. I can see it's, it's late at the end of the conference and I think lots of guys are going to start glazing over at the next slide, but I'll try and go quickly. Uh, do you know how much time I have left? Okay, sweet. Um, so I'll quickly run through the technical architecture which I'm, I'm one of those people as well who, who enjoy just having a single box and setting things up on there and I'm, I, I tend to be quite, quite suspicious of these fancy cloud-based architectures but this is something that we were working on um, for some time. My, my colleague Sajad Anwar had in 2015 given a talk at the State of the Map New York about you know what if we could app get installed OpenStreetMap, right? Like how do we make the OpenStreetMap software more easily installable and usable in different contexts? And this is something that we had been toying around with and playing with the idea for many years uh, because I think, I think we really believe back then as we do now that there's lots of use cases for the OpenStreetMap software uh, that's, that's really useful beyond OpenStreetMap. And so, um, something that we had built and that we used extensively at development seed was something called OSM seed, uh, which is essentially an easy way, easy way um, to deploy the OSM software onto onto cloud providers, right? So it um, it deploys onto Kubernetes. It, it kind of creates containers for all the OSM software tools and gives you an easy way to de deploy it onto a Kubernetes cluster. Um, I know for most people, though, it's easy and Kubernetes don't really go together. I have to say that what I have enjoyed about the process is that we could do this in a way that does not depend on any proprietary um, cloud infrastructure. So, um, you know, the code and all the dependencies so are all open source and, um, you know, it is deployable on, um, you know, bare metal or other, um, other cloud providers. So, all, all the code for the infrastructure is open. I would very much sort of encourage people or people who, who think they can help because boy, are we going to need a lot of help um, to check it out and, um, and plug in. Um, so the services that we run right now for Open Historical Map, it's a fork of the OpenStreetMap website, which has the time slider, which um, is, cu is customized for time, um, to handle time. Uh, we use Tegola to generate vector tiles. Um, there's front-end changes, um, a lot of the work done by uh, the Green Info team um, to, um, to use vector tiles, right? The, the OSM website uses raster tiles, so uh, we, we realize that's, 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 that's not going to work for us. Combination of being too hard and practical plus vector tiles just seemed you know, cooler. You could do this filtering on the front-end, it looks really nice. Um, so there's changes to, you know, there's, there's a fork of the front end, uh, which do specter tiles, um, an improved inspector, a time slider, uh, we run our own instance of Tasking Manager um, um, for OHM and in the next few weeks I think we'll have some more kind of tweaks to Tasking Manager to, more, to better support historical mapping. Um, we run Nomenatum, 
uh, right now it's just stock nominatum uh, with OHM. This is something that um, I'd love if anyone knows anything about the internals of nominatum. I think there's lots of potential tweaks to make it more time aware that we haven't done yet. Um, and we run overpass. Um, and we sort of now deploy all of these as a single unit using a single code base, um, not worrying about kind of like four different people having to uh, manage four different servers, um, you know, stay, um, you know, kind of have everything stay in sync. We can kind of deploy it um, as, as a single code base. Um, and of course, we, you know, publish Minity replication, um, planet dumps, all of that um, for open historical map. We've got some really hard problems ahead. I feel like we've spent 13 years and what we have is a demo. Right? We've got we've got an MVP. We have we have cool demos. Um, the really hard problems of mapping history, to be completely honest, are unsolved. Right? But we have a lot of it is a little bit of a hack. We add start date end date to OSM features. We have a cool time slider to display them. A lot of meeting a lot of historians get really angry. A lot of people who care about data formats get really angry because like what you know a lot of this just doesn't seem. That it's the correct way to do things. So we've got we've got hard problems ahead. Um, one problem that we're calling the boiling the ocean problem: um, coastlines. Coastlines are very hard. Um, uh, tracking changes to coastlines is even harder. Um, I don't want to get into the details of this problem, but uh, if you search in our issues for coastlines, they, you're going to see some wild discussions. At some point there was a discussion about importing coastline data from the end of the last ice age so that we had a baseline and then people could edit over that, yeah. Um, but, I, yeah, boiling the ocean just seems like a fun thing to call it. Um, I think something that Richard had, has talked about in his talks, um, we have to get how we do the tagging schema and feature life cycle correct. Uh, right now, if, 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 if there's a road that changes name 10 times uh, over the course of whatever, 100 years, which in India that happens a lot, um, we just ask users to draw the same road over and over again with different attributes and different start date and dates. This is not sustainable. We need a better way to do this. I think what Richard has proposed is great, but we need to build in support into the rendering engine, into the front end, all of that. Um, date formats, fuzzy dates, this is all complicated. Historians will tell you, you cannot give an exact date to the start and end of things, that's ridiculous. You need to have a notion of approximate dates, of fuzzy dates, uh, which right now we don't really, because how would, uh, how, how would we deal with that? So right now, you know, we need exact dates, but we need to, we, we need to start supporting fuzzy dates. Um, running a fork of OSM is, 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 is all fun and games in the beginning until you need to catch up with upstream. Three years later, then it gets really hard. Uh, we need to do that, uh, you know, we need to constantly catch up with upstream and that's really hard. We need a better process to do that. Any advice is greatly appreciated. Uh, making things like nominatum and overpass time aware is something I don't even know where to start, but hopefully people uh, who know these things better than I can jump in. Yeah, let's let's do this together. There's hard problems ahead. We, we really hope more people jump in um, helping us improve this. Um, yeah, open historical map on the OSM US Slack. Um, it's a mailing list. There's, there's Discord. Um, you can find all the details on the About page. Um, yeah, these were again supposed to be some cool animations, but my time is up again and the animations don't work. So I'd encourage you to please check out openhistoricalmap.org and um, I, I, you know, see these things for yourself. Um, I think we have a little, we have a minute for questions, maybe? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, so you can, um, yeah, that's, I, I just let that play while there's any questions. Thank you.